Hey, John Hickok here. Today we're going to take a look at the VR-80 from Rock Island Armory 12 gauge AR shotgun. So you may have seen the AR-60, or the VR-60 that is, and it looks a little bit more AR-ish than this does. It's got the carry handle and everything, but it's a uh, polymer with well, this one is uh, aluminum alloy. Uh, but this is kind of like the upgraded version from that. So if you have that, I'll give you some idea, but this has been out for a while. I'm not acting like this is some brand new thing that just came out. Um, but we thought uh, this would be something that you guys would be interested in. Magazine fed shotguns are getting more and more popular as time goes on. So we're going to talk about it. That's why we're here. Let's uh, shoot it real quick though. Two liter orange. Two liter yellow. Uh, bowling pin. White and uh, uh, pink, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, there went my watermelon. And uh, of course, uh, um, it, it needs a it needs a, a really serious break in before you can really fire the the lighter, you know, like um, uh, you know, birdshot and and stuff like that. So we're gonna just shoot high brass stuff in here, uh, but that's something to be aware of. That you're going to need to mostly shoot high brass in it if you want it to function uh, right out of the box so and there's different settings you can put it on for different weights ammo weight ammo and power factor and stuff it's on the one for the light ammo right now so before you correct me on that it's uh it's set as low as it will go all right we got some more slugs and that's one thing i want to talk about too is this um Let's shoot first, but this bolt handle is kind of in the way. All right, let's put a couple on the target. All right, let's try, uh, try the big red square over there. A little bit high, I think. All right, so it shoots pretty good. You know, it feels good. Uh, the recoil impulse is, uh, you know, pretty reasonable for a 12 gauge. It kind of handles that pretty well. You know, some automatic shotguns, you know, tend to be, you know, not too bad in that regard. Um, but I will say there's some things about it that are a little bit awkward. It's a more of a budget type of gun. I mean, it's it's amazing that for six seven hundred dollars they're able to make a magazine fed semi-automatic uh, shotgun you know 12 gauge shotgun but there's a few things about it that are a little bit awkward and it could just be personal preference maybe it probably is but so on the bolt handle here it uh now it is reversible you can put it on this side or on that side literally it just pops out and then you can stick it in on the other side um but for most right-handed shooters you're probably going to want it on this side so you can access it with your left hand and um, the uh, bolt release really gets in the way of that so as you can see here as you're working the bolt it'll catch if you're not careful it'll catch on your hand really easily and then just now um, if you saw a minute ago I had the mag in there and I wanted to drop the bolt when I hit it then the bolt handle hit my thumb and you know and stuff like that um, Another thing, and you, again, you can put it on this side, so that would take care of that. But then if you're right-handed, you got to reach around or whatever. Or, you know, if it's not a tactical shotgun, I mean, you just rack it like that. It's fine. But they teach you to always keep your shooting hand on the gun and always use the uh, support hand to work the action and stuff. So it depends on how much you care about that, really. Um, I do not like Ambi uh, safeties because it kind of rubs right there just because of my hand i don't know how common that is or how my hand size has anything to do with it or not how much it has to do with it but uh, that kind of bugs me but as you can see there little allen wrench will take make a quick work of that and then that would be out of your way so the uh the stock is very solid it's got what you know we call a thumb hole stock basically a very big a very big thumb hole uh a hand hole stock <laughs> But uh, they didn't want to. I mean, it's just an import thing. Um, so don't give them too hard of a time about that. And you plus, you can put a standard AR grip on here 
and a standard AR stock. So I actually kind of like the stock enough. I would almost uh, be inclined to just take a hacksaw. And I was originally thinking I could just cut this part off and that part off, but really maybe the thing to do would be to switch out the grip because the grip is nothing special. Put a different grip on there and then just take a hacksaw and literally cut that off and smooth it out a little bit. And then you still have this nice, really solid, you know, sturdy stock. So, you know, if I own this gun, that might be something I would do. The sights uh, come on it, which is nice. A lot of times you don't get these. You don't get flip-up sights that come with, uh, you know, hardly anything these days. Um, they're not they're not expensive. I mean, they're very cheap, but uh, it's nice that it that it comes with them. And of course, it has this fake suppressor, a suppressor. But but I I, I think it was kind of a cool idea to, to put that on there because you, unfortunately. Um, in America, you have to have uh, an 18 inch barrel on a shotgun unless you have one of those weird shock waves where it's an other or something like that, you know, which those are cool. I'm not saying they're not cool, but um, but for this, it has to be at least 18 inches to be legal. So this is a way they were able to kind of keep the look of an AR. Um, it looks like a standard AR-15 with a suppressor on the end of it kind of is what it looks like. It also hides the thickness of the of the barrel and just kind of kind of aids in the overall look of it. And you know, you have this kind of nice thinner, more modern style AR rail and everything. So I, I think they all that kind of kind of makes sense. Now you only get five rounds in the magazine. So that's a kind of a big uh, disadvantage, but it's a 12 gauge. I mean, you know, they can't cheat uh, physics, but you do have this 19 round monstrosity which we'll shoot right now since i've been talking too much we need to shoot stuff all right this thing is this is absurd <laughs> I really uh i mean if you want 20 rounds i mean it's 19 you really should go with the drum i think on a on a uh, magazine fed shotgun I mean, this is just ridiculous i mean it is funny though so they, there's that Okay. Let's uh, let's take out this trash can. That seems like a good use of this. Well, uh, watermelon first. Oh, better flip up my sight. So I can sight stuff. And the safety off. All right. We had a. Oh, now that's interesting. Look at that. I think I know how to fix this. I'm guessing the way to fix this would be to uh, bang it on something. <laughs> All right, well, that didn't work. Um, huh, banging it on something didn't work, so I'm, I think I'm all out of ideas. Oh, there we go. I just didn't bang it <laughs> on something enough. That was the problem. Okay, so always keep that in mind. If you've tried banging it on something, just bang it on something more. All right. Yeah, now we can get back. We get back to it. There we go. So it's... Uh, it, it kind of worked. It's not bad. I mean, come on, you're asking a lot of that. I mean, to be honest, that's really a, that's a novelty kind of thing. I mean, uh, it's amazing that it worked as well as it did. So, um, you know, that's another thing with, with these. When it comes to just like magazine fed uh, shotguns in general, my kind of problem with them is just because the, the magazines are, you know, they're tough to load, uh, it's kind of awkward, and uh, hard to top off unless you replace a whole magazine. You gotta, you gotta carry these magazines on you and stuff. I mean, I'm still very much a just uh, two magazine shotgun type of guy. Um, if, you know, I feel like if you want higher capacity, go with some of those other options like the, um, uh, like the DP-12 or the KSG, where you've got two tubular magazines. So I'm not a big fan of magazine fed shotguns just because I've not seen them be super reliable in general or like, you know, incredibly ergonomic or anything. But the, the magazines are hard and slow to load, but 
you know, you do that and, you know, in the comfort of your own home. And then when you go out into the war zone, as you know, many of us often do, uh, you've got the mags already loaded, you know, so you're not loading them, you know, in the middle of the war zone. You should already have them, have them loaded already. Uh, but I'll, just to show you, um, one of the problems that you have, I'll show you a trick that dad actually figured out. And I'll show you a trick that I figured out. We'll load this thing back up a little bit. So not, maybe not the whole thing. So first one goes in, of course, no problem. But then after the first one, it wants to hang up on the edge of the uh, brass there, right? So if you pull forward on the front, then it slides right in, no problem. Dad figured out that little trick, showed me, because I was fighting with it. Um, so that's not a problem. And then I noticed like once you get very many at all in here, it starts to get really tough. And um, if you grab the shell like that in your hand and then pull down, and then you can kind of tip the front up with your, you know, this finger, your ring finger, I guess, is that what that is? And that kind of makes it a little bit, a little bit easier. So something to keep in mind, but still like kind of, in general, kind of awkward to load. So that's why I'm not a huge, huge fan of these. All right, let's just shoot these out. What did I put in there? Yeah, the lot book. Oh, we had an extra one. Let's take out the uh, rest of these two liters here. Oh, look at these bowling pins. They're cocky. Look, they're just sitting up there. So it seems to function. Uh, yeah, you know, pretty well actually with the uh, with the high brass stuff, and um, and I guess once it um, you know gets more broken in, you you might find that you need to put the other um, attachments in there. Um, you know, for the higher. I, I mean, I don't know. It seems to do fine with the with the setup for light loads with the high brass stuff. But I guess there there was maybe a point where you would need to adjust some of that stuff as it got more broken in. I'm not sure. It's pretty simple to kind of take this thing down. It's probably really hot right now, but it's not too bad, but I almost don't even need to show you, but basically you just kind of unscrew your uh, fake suppressor here, your barrel shroud, and then the rail comes right off and gain access to everything. So not too, not too difficult. And then it uh, comes apart like a regular AR once you get all that stuff out of the way. As you can see there, pretty standard. Probably not a whole lot of uh, interchangeable parts with your AR at home, but they did a pretty decent job, I think, of kind of making it look like an AR. And you know it's it's um on the surface it's a little bit gimmicky you know ar-15 and 12 gauge right it just sounds a little gimmicky but i mean it's the uh, rifle format that people are comfortable with you know so there's some advantage to um having something set up like that with the same you know you know where the safety is you know where the, you know where the bolt release is and you know and the, kind of the general setup and everything so you know it's not the craziest idea definitely I ever heard of but I guess um I think there's anything else I was gonna tell you about it I feel like we need to shoot it at least one more time let's put some uh yeah let's put some slugs yeah we got a couple things left put some slugs in it and we'll wrap it up what's that one ounce yeah. All right. a few of these up now we don't have now they have a um a nine round magazine for this thing, which really is the magazine that makes the most sense versus the five or the 19. But uh, because of everything going on, 
this year in 2020 I haven't been able to uh, get any of those they're sold out so all right there we go well we got five in there all right take out this water jug oh look at that we had a hang up Okay, I think it chambered that next round. Yep. All right, let's take it over there and shoot the, uh, let's shoot that middle red plate with the little uh, section in it. Yep. Huh, it doesn't like those for some reason. Interesting. Okay. Let's try the, uh, I'm going to try to hit the really small red plate over there. we got one left. Just barely to the left. All right. So there you go, the VR-80. Um, not a bad, not a bad shotgun for the money. Uh, cool concept. Um, you know, would definitely be neat to see. Uh, you know, I want to see how this concept sort of develops. You know, over time, the magazine-fed shotgun. It's very popular um, right now. You know, and it's kind of on the cusp. I feel like, you know, there's going to be a lot of innovation in that area. Um, so it's something I'm definitely interested in, but I'm not sold on at this point for sure uh, but this is a pretty cool one this was not this would be um, definitely worth trying out if you're really interested in, in something like this but like I said a couple of little little things that are annoying but you know you can kind of work around some of that stuff especially for the uh, the price of, of this thing if you can get it to be reliable and find the right ammo that works for you and all that kind of stuff well there you go the VR 80 oh also uh, mentioned it has uh, chokes too. You can put different chokes in it. Um, since I'm sure uh, some of you guys will be, you know, pheasant hunting and things like that with these. But uh, I appreciate you guys for checking out the video and um, I'll see you next time. Uh, all right. It's a long walk from where I had to shoot that. Oh man. Oh, hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick-on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall. They're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water-soluble and non-toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips. Definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J O H N underscore H I C K O K 45 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.